In this video, we're going to be talking about furnaces in 2024 and what you should know. We're going to be talking about some recent laws that were passed that will affect the types of furnaces that can get installed. This has to do with emissions requirements, efficiency requirements, and more. We're going to be talking about the three types of furnaces, and we're also going to be talking about furnaces that pair with heat pumps, which are also known as dual fuel technology. And we even have some specific laws that are relevant to Colorado, as well as a few other states that we'll be talking about that have to do with some of the changes that are coming down the pipe in future years. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you're in the market for HVAC system replacement and you find this content helpful, it's a free way that you can show your support if you got value from this content. So first off, let's talk about the three basic types of furnaces that are available. And what we're talking about is the stages of furnaces, because there's actually a couple different types of furnaces. You have high efficiency furnaces and standard efficiency furnaces. And I'll explain what the difference is between those two. But the three types I'm talking about are single stage, two stage, or multi-stage, which typically in the furnace space is just a two stage system. And then the highest efficiency systems are typically modulating. Now what those systems do, and the only difference between them is how the heating output is staged. So let's say you have a 100,000 BTU system that is a single stage system. When that system first kicks on, it is putting out 100,000 BTUs per hour of heat through its combustion process. And it's running at that stage and only that stage. So it means it's either running at 100% capacity or 0% capacity. Now, a step above a single stage system is what's called a two stage system. And as you can guess from the title, it has two stages. And so basically that same 100,000 BTU furnace in a two stage system would come on at 50,000 BTUs of heating capacity, and it would run at maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes. The actual specifics are are going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. And then it's going to ramp up to its second stage of heating, which would be 100% capacity of heating capacity for that particular furnace. Now, modulating systems are essentially like the inverters or the variable speed systems in the furnace world. And the reason is, is because when a modulating system first kicks on, it might kick on at 10% capacity or 20% capacity. And then that gas valve actually modulates in small increments along a continuum. And the benefit of going with a modulating system over a single stage or a two stage system is always going to come down to comfort. And they're more comfortable for the reason that number one, they are quieter. And number two, because they ramp up and down along a continuum, you get more gradual temperature increases in your house versus a system that comes on, blasts your house with heat, and then shuts off, leaving certain rooms too hot and certain rooms too cold and other areas just right. The modulating system tends to provide for longer run time. So the system actually runs a little bit longer but because it has a variable speed motor, that motor is going to be more efficient to run. And on top of it, when it's running, it's going to create more even temperature distribution throughout the house because you have more air circulating and you don't have a big burst of heat flooding through the ductwork, going all over the house, trying to heat things up really quickly. So they're better at maintaining temperatures that are a little bit more even. Now, those are the stages of, of furnaces or the types of furnaces as it relates to staging. But what about when it comes to efficiency. Well, there's basically two standards of efficiency. You have a standard efficiency or 80% efficient system, and then you have a 96% or 98%, but basically a high efficiency system. And the difference between the two is that an 80% efficient system basically will have a metal exhaust coming off of the top and 80% of the heat stays in the home, 20% goes out the exhaust. Now, in this case of a high efficiency system, a high efficiency furnace has 96% of the heat staying in the home and only only 4% going out the exhaust. However, the truth is that high efficiency furnaces do add a little bit of complexity to the install. And so there's a few nuances with high efficiency furnaces that you want to take into consideration if you're getting a high efficiency furnace. Now, in my particular opinion, 96% efficient furnaces do make more sense if you happen to be living off grid or in areas where you're on propane or areas your natural gas rates are very high. And the reason is, is because obviously you're going to be saving money. But if you're trying to get a high efficiency furnace for ecological reasons, you would be better off getting a heat pump if you were planning on pairing that with a solar application where you have your own solar panels or you're producing your own electricity or you're using clean energy for heating your home. And the reason is because a high efficiency furnace is still combusting gas. So you still have a gas exhaust byproduct. And although they are a little cleaner burning, and that's one of the laws I'm going to touch on briefly, is that particular 
law is actually related to high efficiency furnaces and the emissions of these systems by comparison to their 80% counterparts. But the bottom line is high efficiency systems are a little bit more complex. They have more moving parts. And so as a result, if they are not well maintained, they are not going to be as reliable. That's why one of the systems that I think is actually a better option for most people that are going for a high efficiency system. And this, take this with a grain of salt, because this really depends on the climate that you live in. For example, if you live in a very cold climate like Minnesota or Montana, a high efficiency furnace is a great option. But if you happen to live in Southern California, you really don't need a high efficiency furnace in that market. But in Southern California, new installation applications actually are required. And when I say new installation, we're talking about new home builds. We're not talking about an existing home that you're retrofitting a furnace for. In Southern California, you are required on a new home build to put in high efficiency furnaces. And that's true in most parts of the country. But the thing is, is in Southern California, that doesn't really make sense because although you might think it's getting cold, any heat pump, even a single stage heat pump would keep up just fine in Southern California. So there's no real need to go with a natural gas furnace in that application, especially because the new heat pumps that are coming out can keep up in low ambient temperatures and in moderate climates like Southern California, they can heat beautifully and very efficiently and very quietly. But the bottom line is the difference between the two systems or the 80% systems and the 96% systems, because that high efficiency system is extracting more heat out of the combustion process, it is what's called a condensing gas furnace. And so that's why on a high efficiency system, you're going to have white PVC pipes coming off the top of the furnace because the exhaust will be very moist, which means there's going to be a lot of moisture and water in that exhaust, which creates more complications when the system is running if that exhaust condensate trap is not cleaned out on a regular basis. So this is just something to consider if you're getting a high efficiency furnace, they can be great. If you're in a very cold climate, they make the most sense, definitely. But for a lot of people we talk to, the reason we like the 80% systems, especially in markets like Denver, Colorado, where we're based, because it has a moderate climate, a dual fuel application where we put in a cold climate heat pump and pair it with an 80% furnace backup makes for the perfect combination for people to be able to utilize the comfort of a high-end, quiet, inverter-driven heat pump that heats their house comfortably. But then on the coldest nights of the year, when we get a few cold snaps where it might get below 10 degrees or five degrees or zero degrees Fahrenheit, they have that backup 80% furnace for those ultra cold nights. But the rest of the year, their heat pump is running as their primary source of heat. Now, the law in reference that I'm speaking of is a law that was recently passed in Colorado mandating high efficiency furnaces going forward. And the reason this is a problem is because anytime you're installing a high efficiency furnace in a retrofit application, which means an existing home, the problem is if that existing home has an 80% exhaust, which is typically B vent, which is a type of metal exhaust versus the PVC exhaust, you're going to have to run a new exhaust, which is easy if the mechanical room borders an exterior wall. But if it's in a condo or a mid-rise, it is not easy and or near impossible to get the exhaust out without cutting holes in the ceiling and running PVC pipes through the joy space. And this becomes a very expensive system replacement if we're now having to put in a high efficiency system for a space that is really not getting that much use. Now, the specific law that was passed that made 80% furnaces illegal as of 2025, meaning at the end of 2025, you will no longer be able to get 80% efficient furnaces, was passed specifically in Colorado. However, there are other laws like this in popping up in other parts of the country that are essentially mandating high efficiency furnace technology, which again, in my opinion, is a mistake because in these retrofit applications, it's not always possible possible. And it also doesn't make that much sense because in some of these condo applications that we're installing systems in, the amount of natural gas being saved by a high efficiency furnace is so minor because this person might only have a $20 heating bill in the coldest month out of the year for their one bedroom or two bedroom or three bedroom apartment because they have a lot of shared walls in this condo. And so the condo is very well insulated and upgrading or forcing them to upgrade to a high efficiency furnace furnace really doesn't make sense in this particular application. So, so if you happen to be in Colorado and you've been on the fence about replacing your system and you want to know what your options are, it's definitely a great time to get your furnace replaced in Colorado because right now, if you are looking for an 80% efficient system, you still have that as an option, but pretty shortly, you won't be able to do that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is dual fuel technology. And there's actually a video that we made that explains dual fuel technology in more depth. So I'll make sure to link 
link that video at the end. But before we talk about that, if you haven't done so already, please smash the like button or consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's a free way that you can show your support if you found this content helpful so far, and it is much appreciated. So what is a dual fuel system and how does it work? Well, basically a dual fuel system is what it sounds like. You have a furnace as your backup source of heat, and then you have a heat pump as your primary source of heat. And when the heat pump is running, the furnace is off. When the heat pump needs assistance, the heat pump shuts off and the furnace kicks on and it seamlessly works and integrates together. And the benefits of these systems is that you can have a furnace that works on the coldest nights of the year, but you can still utilize heat pump technology or cold climate heat pump technology. So if you live in a moderate cold climate or even a colder climate, these work great because if you live in a place where the temperatures regularly get below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is still your average lows are in that moderate range of 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a lot of heat pumps out there that work on a dual fuel basis where it will be efficient to run your heat pump. And then on the coldest nights of the year or on the nights when that system is not keeping up, your backup furnace will kick in to save the day and the slack when the heat pump can't keep up when it's very cold out. Now, the truth is heat pump technology has come a long way. And we talk about a lot of the different heat pumps on this channel. So if you came here looking for the types of furnaces that are available, but you're unfamiliar with some of the heat pumps that are on the market. And we talk a lot about inverter driven heat pumps and the different types of heat pumps for both cold climates and warm climates. So if you're interested in checking those out, like I said, I'll be linking a video at the end of this about the dual fuel technology, as well as a few other videos that talk about some of the other types of heat pumps that are on the market. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado, there's actually a link in the description where you can book with us directly. So if you're interested in booking with us, check out that link below. And if you happen to be outside of our coverage area, but you're still interested in being connected with a contractor, we have a new program that's in a soft launch beta right now. It's on the hvacdopeshow.com. And that link is also in the description below, but we'll actually pair you directly with a contractor in your area that works on the specific technology that you're looking to get installed. So whether that's geothermal or a cold climate heat pump or just a good old fashioned 80% furnace, and you want to make sure whoever installs it knows what they're doing and is a reliable company. That's what that program was created for. And again, this is in soft launch beta mode right now. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can click the link below. There's zero cost to the homeowner. This is literally just about connecting homeowners with the best contractors in their area. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.